Hello and welcome you all. Dear students, this is the revision lecture for the topic DC machines. Actually, it is unit number four from the subject electrical circuits. DC machines basically consists of two parts, two major parts. One is DC generator and second is DC motors. So this is the block diagram of DC generator. I will tell you the simple tricks to remember the diagram and how to correlate the things. So first we will talk about the DC generator. The basic function of DC generator is to convert mechanical energy into the electrical energy. This is the diagram, schematic diagram of a DC generator. Now what are the different parts? How is the construction of DC generator? It consists of a permanent magnet made by N and S that is North Pole and South, South Pole. It consists of a coil A, B, C, D. This coil is connected to one prime mover which is not shown in this diagram. It is related to this dotted line. This prime mover causes rotation of this coil. So prime mover is rotating because of which coil gets rotated. Now C1 and C2 are known as commutators whereas B1 and B2 are brushes. Brushes are used to collect the signal from the commutator and transfer it to the load. RA indicates the load. Current passing through the load is IL. This is about the construction of DC generator. Now about the working of DC generator. In case of permanent magnet made by North and South Pole, the magnetic field, magnetic lines are from North Pole to the South Pole. Now, according to the Fleming's right hand rule, whenever the magnetic field is cut by some moving conductor, then a current is induced. So this ABCD coil is acting as a moving conductor because it is connected to the prime rotor, prime mover, which causes rotation of this coil. As shown in this diagram, I have shown one particular condition. This coil AB is connected to commutator C1 whereas coil CD is connected to commutator C2. Now as far as uh, coil AB is concerned, the current is moving from A to B. That means this same line is connected to C1. So for C1, commutator C1, current is moving away from C1. Whenever it moves away from C1, it represents negative. So I have marked here negative sign. In case of CD, CD is connected to commutator C2. The current flows from C to D. That is, it is going towards commutator C2. So it is treated as positive. So I have marked positive side over here. Now in case of a load, current flows from uh, positive to negative terminal. So in case of a load, current is flowing in the upward direction. This current is IL. Now during the next rotation, the positions of commutators are interchanged. That means this is C2, this will become C2, this will become C1. Whereas brushes remains as it is. Only positions of commutators are changed. Now, due to rotation, the position of coil is also changed. So this becomes A, B, C, D. Remaining things are as it is. Now, refer the same diagram. For A, B, the this coil is connected to B2. So for AB, it is going towards B2. So B2 becomes positive. Whereas for CD, CD is now uh, connected to B1. It is moving away from uh, commutator C2. So it becomes negative. Current flows from positive to negative. So in during after rotation also, the current is flowing in the upward direction. That means always the current flows in unidirectional, in one particular direction that is upward in this case. Now the separate question can be asked, what is the function of commutator in DC generator? Very simple, commutator collects the mechanical energy, I mean it uh, collects the mechanical energy developed by the rotation of coil and it transfers it to the particular load. This is one function. Second function is, I have drawn a di diagram of EMF that is electromotive force. Originally, EMF is sinusoidal. The function of commutator is to convert this sinusoidal into unidirectional. Unidirectional means there is no negative EMF, only positive EMF, EMF has, are there, but it is still varying. It is not constant. So these are the two functions of the commutator. Next is DC motors. Now, it is very much similar to the DC generator. If you know the previous diagram, what changes you have to do? The function of DC motor is to convert electrical signal into mechanical signal. That means accept electrical stationary energy and convert it into rotational mechanical energy. 
what is the change here i have shown electric supply in the previous diagram there was a load and uh, some current was uh, flowing through the load here i have connected electric supply remaining diagram is as it is the construction is same as that of the dc generator you don't have to prepare it separately now about the working as shown in this diagram uh, the the brush b1 and this is commutator c1 this is commutator c2 brush b1 is connected to the positive supply of electricity so through the coil a b the current is flowing from flowing from a to b b2 is connected to negative supply so through the coil uh, through the segment cd the current is flowing from c to d now according to the fleming's left hand rule in case of dc generator it was fleming's right hand rule here according to the fleming's left hand rule the rotation of coil takes place because the force is exerted since there is a magnetic field between north and south pole and we are applying some electricity so due to this the force is exerted due to this exerted force the coil ab is moved in a downward direction and cd is moved in the upward direction so the rotation of coil takes place this is this is the case uh, as far as the first part is concerned in the second part it is very much similar to the dc generator in the next cycle the positions of a b c d will get changed accordingly the positions of c1 and c2 will change but in both the cases the rotation will be along the same direction that is in this case it will be in anti clockwise direction so this is the functioning of this is the working of dc motor now the same question can be asked uh, what is the function of commutator in dc motor only difference is that in this case the function of commutator is to accept the static electric supply this electric supply is not rotating so it accepts static electric supply and converts it to, it into mechanical motion because of this electric supply the mechanical motion of this coil takes place so this is first part second function remains same as that of dc generator alternating emf is changed into unidirectional emf as far as dc machines are concerned there are two major parts i am talking about dc motors two major parts one is stator and another is rotational part which is known as the armature so stator as the name indicates it is the stationary part armature is the rotating part there are two types of armature windings one is lap winding and another is wave winding a comparison can be asked or if separate uh, explanation uh, is asked you can make use of the same uh, table which i have drawn it for comparison purpose so here i have written lap winding and second is wave winding these are the two types of windings used as a armature windings in dc motors now this is the diagram of lap winding second is the diagram of wave winding voltage capacity for lap winding is low for wave winding is high current capacity is opposite it is high and low respectively this is important for solving numericals also these values are these values are required number of parallel paths it is denoted by a so how many parallel paths are used in a winding that is a is equals to p p represents number of poles so p is representing number of poles in case of wave winding value of a that is number of parallel paths is 2 whereas number of uh, brush sheets that is equals to p again equals to number of poles and it is equals to 2 in case of a wave winding the next part is derivation of emf equation for dc generator actually uh, these de derivations are very simple one more derivation is there that is emf equation of dc motor presently we are talking about emf equation of dc generator do remember the notations p represents number of stator poles stator is the static part not rotating phi represents number of flux per pole z represents number of armature conductors armature is the rotating part it contains different number of conductors that is denoted by z n is the speed measured in rpm revolutions per minute a capital a represents the number of parallel paths used in the conductor now from this notations we can write number of conductors per path since there are a number of total uh, parallel paths and number of armature conductors are z so number of conductors per path for each path number of conductors will be z by a now the change in flux that is d phi is given by p into phi very simple p represents number of uh, stator poles and phi represents flux per pole so the flux cut per pole is given by p into phi now 
equation of dt do remember this speed is measured in revolutions per minute there are n number of revolutions total number of revolutions are i mean speed is n so if you want to calculate value of uh, duration time period for revolutions then simply it is 60 upon n because this is measured in meters so this will be in seconds now according to the faraday's law the induced emf generated emf is given by z upon a z upon a is what number of conductors per path into d phi by dt so simply put the values it is z by a into d phi by dt value of d phi is p phi upon dt is 60 upon n therefore the final equation will be this again will move to the numerator term so it is a z p phi n upon a into 60 this is the uh, formula to calculate emf of a dc generator the next important part of the dc motor is back emf of dc motor we have discussed in case of dc motor the electric supply is given to the brushes and then commutators and uh, accordingly uh, the rotation of coil takes place in between the permanent magnet that means in between the north pole and south pole so according to the faraday's law due to this rotation between the magnetic field created uh, in between north and south pole an emf is induced and according to the lenz's law whenever emf is induced it provides opposition to the cause which is inducing emf in simplified language due to the rotation of a coil in between north and south, south pole an emf is induced which produces opposition to the supply voltage that is electric supply v this type of opposition is known as a back emf and it is denoted by notation eb this is the simplified diagram which shows the back emf this is the armature supply voltage this is the dc motor and back emf is developed across dc motor as shown in this uh, diagram the second diagram is an electrical equivalent circuit back emf is shown like this as a voltage source and armature is having a resistance whose value is given by ra now ia is known as the armature current keep in mind armature is the rotating part of a motor now the formula of back emf is same as the dc generator just now we have derived it which is p phi z n upon 60 a the meaning of each term we have already discussed in case of a dc generator now make the thing simple if i want to uh, use kvl for this circuit again don't uh, use some lengthy methods of kvl make it simple this voltage is v this is eb so voltage difference will be v minus eb upon resistance basically voltage upon resistance is the current upon resistance r a gives me value of armature current i a very simple what i did i took the voltage difference that is v minus eb resistance signal resistance is there r a voltage upon r a is the current that is armature current i a now whenever the speed of motor increases i am telling you the significance of emf in the from the exam point of view you can expect the question like this key what is the back emf and what is its significance or explain the concept of back emf one and the same explanation here, uh, equation of armature current is V minus EB upon RA. EB is the back EMF, V is the supply voltage, RA is the armature resistance. Now, when the speed of motor increases, then value of EB, back EMF also increases, but it is V minus supply voltage minus this value. So, it will reduce the armature current. That means, since uh, due to increase in speed, armature current is reduced, it gives some kind of protection to the DC motor. Next part is losses in DC motors. Dear students, you don't have to read three, four pages related to losses of uh, losses in DC motor. I have summarized the points. If you just remember these points, you can well attempt such questions. I will explain how to uh, memorize the things. I have summarized the different losses. First loss is arm or core or magnetic loss so do remember two simple words it is due to hysteresis loss and it is eddy current loss you don't have to write the explanation it is not expected as such so these are the two losses and these losses are fixed losses how to minimize these losses i have written two points use the uh, steel material which is known as crgo that is cold 
rolled grain oriented steel material it will reduce down these losses and second criteria to reduce these losses is use low density flux second type of loss is copper cu stands for copper or winding loss so there are different equations now how to write uh, how to memorize these equations very simple basic equation of power any power is current square into i mean i square r current square into resistance so there are three types of uh, copper or winding losses one is armature losses armature current is ia resistance is ra so equation is ia square ra basic formula as i said current square into resistance then there are two types of dc motors one is series mode dc motor and another is shunt that means parallel dc motor so for shunt it is ish square into rsh sh stands for shunt winding for series winding notation is se so i square se and r square se very simple so this is the copper or uh, winding loss third type of loss is the brush loss we have discussed the diagram the brushes are in contact with the commutator so due to contact with the commutator there can be losses this this is known as the brush losses fourth type of loss is the mechanical losses as the name indicates uh, this is due to the mechanical action there are rotating parts which causes the friction so it is due to the frictional uh, it is also known as frictional loss and next is windage loss how to remember it remember this word wind there can be air gap between rotating part and machine enclosure due to this wind or air gap type uh, certain types of losses are taking place that is known as windage losses last type of loss is the stray loss it is basically due to the distortion of the pole flux so if you just simply remember these points you can well write anything in any explanation related to losses in dc motors the next important part is the necessity of starters for a dc motor starters are used now why it is required we have discussed the formula of ia ia is armature current it is v minus eb upon ra just now in the in case of equivalent diagram i have explained you this equation ra is the armature resistance eb is the back emf v is the supply voltage initially when you start the dc motor at that time value of eb is zero at the time of starting so simply at the starting armature current becomes v upon ra ra is the armature resistance usually value of armature resistance is very small it is less than 1 ohm since this value of ra is small it is at the denominator so v upon any small value less than 1 will produce very large huge current of ia that is armature current it may damage the armature winding so to limit this current starters are required what is the basic concept see if you want to limit the current flowing through any circuit you need to connect some extra resistance in series just at the beginning after that once the back emf is generated according to this equation the armature current will be controlled so to produce certain extra resistance in series with the motor only at the starting point starters are used this is the function of starter now there are two types this is the necessity of starter there are two types of starter one is three point and another is four point starter that diagram is very lengthy so i am not drawing that diagram only i am covering important part that is necessary of starter now the last part remaining part of this unit is the numericals on dc machines for which i have made a i have created a separate video so do watch that video so that's it for today's session this was for the revision of dc machine so thank you thank you a lot